thank you so much guys for joining in again i am your host suraj one of the co-founders of gradvine a peer to peer mentorship firm for all of you that that have uh, sort of been through this undergraduate journey with us thank you for joining in again the topic that we are going to be talking about today is um timelines and requirements for undergraduate admissions abroad in this particular webinar what i'm trying to do is essentially tell you a give you a breakdown of all of the timelines that you need to adhere to figure out when you need to do what and then how to plan your entire strategy to get into your dream university at this point in time again my name is suraj uh, i'm the founder of gradvine i went to kanaki mala to get a masters degree and gradvine is a platform is a peer to peer mentorship platform that has over 600 mentors every single one of them at a top 30 university doing a bunch of different things right and we joined today and this is something that is absolutely amazing for us so we joined today by um satvik satvik is a rising senior at the university of illinois at banana champaign um majoring in computer science so all you guys who are looking to do stem or any sort of engineering he is the right guy to talk to right so satvik also has a, another sort of an experience of having taken a gap year after his high school i know that a lot of you are thinking about that at this particular point in time or uh, specifically the ones that are in their 11th grades so that's something that you can ask him about he uh, after graduating from high school he took a gap year explored a bunch of interest in entrepreneurship uh, ed tech uh, in uh, a lot of healthcare stuff etc and then currently works on research in human computer interaction at uic okay without further ado let's get started with the stuff that i wanted to cover today i'm going to cover a bunch of different topics but essentially getting started with when you should have sort of started to think about um admissions process as such let's say you want to get into university in the august or september of 2021 that's when you want to start so every single thing will be catered with that particular timeline in mind you can just do 18 months 10 months before 12 months before you can just move, move around the timeline based on where you are at in terms of your own journey so 18 months before one of the most important things has to be decided whether you're actually going to go ahead and apply for a for a undergraduate degree abroad or are you going to be doing are you comfortable doing that in india so that's the primary decision that you have to make when applying to college it is absolutely critical that you start the the start the process early especially if you're an international student the application process is pretty long actually and it's for people that have gone through it it's potentially frustrating at times because of all of this you would want to give yourself at least 18 months or as much time as possible for you to complete the necessary application material to avoid missing deadlines to make sure that your essays the application essays are point on point etc so you want to be making sure that you apply or start thinking about applying at least 18 months in advance research various universities colleges programs majors etc start your research on that 18 months from uh, the time of your entry to university register or uh, prepare to register for all of the standardized tests stay tuned till the end of my presentation i have a slide on what's happening to all of the standardized tests and your grades because of the current pandemic uh make sure that you register for all of your sat and act is ielts sofel or any other exams including aps for that matter keep working hard in school i cannot stress the fact and this is something that i've talked to you about on previous webinars as well one of the most important things for you to uh, make sure not just during this particular pandemic uh, or this particular application cycle but in general is to keep your grades very very high so that's one thing that i would absolutely recommend and then consider receiving admission counseling from uh, institutions like us where we can sit down break down your individual profile sit down build your profile that has enough time for us to sort of give you the inputs in terms of what you need to be doing what you need to be setting right and then how you want to structure your essays and the rest of the application process so those are the things that you need to be doing 18 months in advance again for those of you who've just joined don't worry about this we will have a recording of the entire webinar up on our youtube and instagram so you can watch there as well if you are sort of missed out the first half bit all right so 18 months prior is when you should have locked in your decision of going and applying abroad you should have a vague idea of what major minor university college etc you are going to be applying to and in general consider receiving admission guidance because we have 
had the experience of putting thousands of students through the entire process. And therefore, that is something that we can bring to the table with respect to your own application process as such. Next is 12 to 14 months before the start of the application. That is, if you're applying to August, if you're applying to get into college um, in August of next year, August of this year or June, July of this year is when you should get started in terms of the entire college application process itself. Start researching all of the colleges that you're interested in. Now is the time to essentially set things in motion. Fill out or start to fill out, open up at least your applications, figure out or narrow down your choice of universities, find out how to apply to these places and start gathering all of the documentation that you will require. So open up your portals, if it is the common app that, or if it's the uh, University of Texas, California, all of these, right? Start opening up your portals, filling out basic information, figuring out what each one of these universities requires. And the timeline for that is June, July. So this is absolutely the most critical part of your um, entire timeline. Getting or getting started on research on universities, programs that are available, all of the sort of uh, majors, minors, etc. that you might be potentially thinking. All of these are things that you want to act, absolutely sit down and uh, work towards at this point in time. And therefore, that is something that is absolutely critical that you start from now on. All right. The next thing that you want to be essentially doing is while filling out a little bit of, uh, of these applications, while opening up these applications, make sure that you have all of the necessary information in place. Make sure that you have the forms for each one. Uh, you know sort of the university systems and the kind of procedures they are following. And make sure that you are preparing for all of the standardized tests, all of the entrance examinations, etc. that universities are going to require from you. Next is 10 to 12 months. So that's the timeline between August, September. That's the time when you should have finalized your applications. You should have finalized your university list. You should have a great idea in terms of the main documents that you need to complete all of the checklists in every single university. Now is the time to also create personalized every single university checklist. So for example, you're applying to the UCAL or University of California system. What universities are you going to apply within that? What schools within those universities are you going to apply to? What are specific requirements of each one of these? Schools? Create personalized checklists for each one of them. Now is the, also the time to start getting into the final drafts of all of the application essays that are required. And I cannot stress the fact that you have to get started early when it comes to admissions, when it comes to um, application materials specifically. I cannot stress the fact that essays are going to make or break an entire application. And therefore, that is something that you want to be getting a lot of expert um, opinion on, a lot of expertise in terms of getting the communication, getting the right points across in every single part of your essays and making sure that you have a checklist of all of them. Get in touch with the universities, with the admissions guys, just um, name recognition works a lot and we talked about this in the previous um, sort of uh, webinars as well. Start requesting the schools for transcripts and I'm going to cover this part in the last, very last slide where I talk about what's going to happen because of the pandemic. Write your application essays. Get people to review those application essays. At Gradvine, the way we do it is you are allotted a mentor. A mentor is someone like Satwik who's at a university who's pursuing a computer science major if that's what you want to apply to. A liberal arts like Shivani Paripali who's going to come on the next session. Like Divyansh who went to uh, Econ plus Operations Research at Berkeley. These are the kind of people that are going to be sitting down with you, working with you on every single question for the application essays. Once you have the structure, once you have the first two drafts, etc., done, that's when you start refining every single essay. That's when you send it to the core committee here at Grabine. We will establish a core group of people, core group of mentors, about five or six for each application, where we will sit down internally and go through every single essay that you're writing, make sure that it is conveying and is up to the prompt that you're talking about, and then give you specific feedback in terms of what you need to be doing to, uh, to improve the essay itself. All of this is a time-taking process and you have to absolutely get started early. Again, next is 10 months before the application. At this point, you should have already completed your college applications and are ready to submit them to your chosen universities, chosen colleges, etc. 
this is very very critical right early applications early decisions what to do what not to do we have a webinar coming on that how to strategy uh, how, how to set a strategy in place for the kind of university lists etc that's the subsequent webinar that's coming in but 10 months before which is um, somewhere around september october november that's when you should be done with all applications etc so that's when you want to be essentially making sure that all of your application material, all of the university checklists that you have, all of them have been absolutely completed. And if you have the need to retake any of your standardized tests, if you have to retake the uh, SAD or the ACT or the TOEFL or the IELTS, this is your time. Get all standardized tests, all applications sent before the early application deadline, not just for the EA, or not just for the early decisions, but for everything. That's the common process that we follow at Gravine. And this is one of the biggest reasons why 90%, 98% of my students go to a top 50 universities and 52%, one in every two student that, uh, students that enrolls with us goes to a top 10 university for that particular major. Therefore, this is absolutely critical. You want to be finishing off all of your applications as early as possible. Retake all of the entrance exams, etc. Line up all of your financing. Make sure you complete all of the applications, etc. And that's when um, three months before the applications, you've submitted all of that. You just wait now. Um, universities release their decisions in March, April. Some of them take a little bit of time. There are early decisions that you get in December as well. So make sure that uh, once you've completed, avoid a lot of stress, just chill for a little bit. Once you have all of your decisions, apply for your student visa, and then one month before is when you get all of the financials in place, all of the I-20s, passports, visas, and then you can fly out. I hope the timeline itself is clear. You want to be starting the entire application process 18 months in advance. With about 12 months, that's when you take all of your standardized tests, Make sure to get um, uh, sorted in terms of your university list. With about 10 months left is when you should have completed all your applications. You should have gotten great essays in place, finished all of that. And then you should have wait till about March or April of the subsequent year of when you finish or when you are getting into college for your application decisions. I have an entire slide just dedicated to one point, which is start thinking about applications early. For all of you who are in your 11th grade, you will be too late if you let May go by. If you're not thinking about when to take DSATs, if you've not registered already for DSATs, APs, TOEFL, IELTS, you will be late. If it hits June 15th, that's when you want to be starting to panic. That's when you want to make sure that you have all of the things in place and that's when a lot of students lose the plot in terms of planning ahead. So I have an entire slide dedicated to start thinking early about applications because 10% higher chances of getting in as compared to someone who has a better profile than you if you apply early. Next is admissions requirements. What are all of the things? These are just a little bit of a primer. Universities might have different requirements off of you depending on which university you're applying to. So you'll need transcripts from all of your 9th, 10th, 11th grades. You will need standardized test scores, APs or other test scores, um, extracurricular certificates, etc. You will need application essays, very, very important, all application essays, financial statements, financial information of your sponsors, and then lastly, reference letters. All of these are things that you will be requiring, right? How to stand out from the rest? We talked about this quite a lot in our previous sessions, but I'm going to repeat that again. Begin applications early. 10% higher chance of getting in if you apply early. Be yourself in the essays. Don't try and imitate someone else. Don't try and be something that you think that the admissions committee is going to look for, not going to lead you anywhere. Be authentic. Consider what is absolutely more important and learn about it. What are you most interested about and go deep dive in it. Universities do not want well-rounded individuals. Universities want well-rounded classes of specialists, made up of specialists. So you want to be specializing in something. Um, absolutely tailor your essays. Generic essays will not work. And that gets me to the next slide, which is demonstrated in just one of the biggest ways of standing out from the rest of the pile. Don't just fill out the application materials. Everyone is doing that. 
make sure that you're putting in a lot of effort in terms of telling the university why this is of particular importance to you why this particular university why this particular major it goes a long way and this is something that i cannot stress on use the application material use the essays to make sure that you stress or show that you are very very highly interested in joining a particular university and the program itself tailor essays um, visit university campuses if you can't then do the virtual tours be very authentic always 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 answer the additional essays right here's a couple of things that i wanted to talk to you about apart from the stuff that gradbind does there's a couple of things that i wanted to talk to you about today the next essay key is going to be on august 29th tentatively this is a date that will also have the subject essay keys so if you guys are looking to take the sat and the subject sat august 29th is the international sat day commit this to memory go on to sat uh, to college board's website look up the sat dates there is also a date for international students in september but that does not have the subject sat so that is something that you guys have to keep in mind if you haven't got the grades from previous or this particular year yet because of the pandemic they will move admissions committees will move to a historic trend analysis so they will look at uh, grades from 9th 10th 11th and whatever they can get get their hands on in terms of projected scores for 12th if you haven't taken the sat there might not be makeup tests uh, there might be a lot more of makeup tests so don't worry at this point in time however get in on the next possible date because if you miss august or september it's going to be crunch time you will not be able to send in your applications for early applications or early decisions so absolutely something you want to be uh, keeping your eye on acts people who are taking the acts instead of the sats if you've registered for the april 4th test that's been moved to june 13th and 14th so keep an eye out for that as well june 13th and 14th that might get moved again but that's something that you want to keep an eye on for those of you who've registered for the acts instead of the sats tofel or ielts majorly tofel ielts has not communicated yet so i do not know tofel has moved to home tests and stuff so there might even be waivers communicate with your school if they require tofel if you're coming from cbsc state boards ib or any of the other uh, curriculum that is being taught in india they might give you a waiver all unit tests or tests all standardized tests might become optional at some of the really big universities we are sort of starting to see that particular trend starting with northeastern and a couple of other universities but even if they make even if some universities make it optional do not stop at that point in time absolutely go ahead and take the advantage of giving the standardized test you will stand out rather than be the average if you get a great score on the test use the additional essays always optional essays always every single opportunity that you have to showcase the work outside of class especially given the fact that this is such a sort of a period where it's very difficult for admissions committees to know how deep you've gone into a particular sort of an extracurricular or because of the fact that a lot of extracurriculars have been um, fallen have fallen apart you want to be taking advantage of every single essay that you can all right um so that's pretty much it i think in terms of the presentation today what i'm going to do now is go ahead and get our guest speaker uh, for the day sathik if you can come up you know come on um, video that be great hello hey great so we have sathik with us today like i said he's a rising senior um, at uic majoring in computer science what i wanted to get from him was a little bit of understanding of how his high school journey was so hey sathik first of all thank you so much for joining in man um, it's great to have you on board this is someone that i have known for almost three or four four years almost now or maybe a, a little no. more it's been a, a lot more i was i was probably in the 8th grade when i first met you so yeah. like 8 so, years now uh, yeah the 
distinct advantage of having seen through college journey how he shaped up to me as an individual and it's a great great pleasure to have you back here so one of the things i wanted to start with was how was your own high school journey what sure. so firstly thank you for having me it's it, it's a pleasure to be here um i really enjoyed the presentation um i wish somebody had given me that rundown like when i was in the 10th or 11th grade let me know okay this is when you should be planning things and help me establish that timeline for myself so um uh, i really like that um to talk about high school um so for context i went to chirac um uh, from like the 6th grade to the 12th grade um when i was when i was in the 9th grade i switched to um the igcse curriculum at chirac so i was in the igcse curriculum for years 9 and 10 and then i moved to ibdp for 11 and 11th and 12th um for me personally i really enjoyed that experience because at the time uh chirac was still sort of um newly starting out the international curriculum or like scaling it up um this meant that my class sizes were small uh my the international section and within chirac is treated almost like a different school um so i got different i i got a unique set of opportunities that i wouldn't otherwise um and those really helped shape my high school experience um in terms of the attention that i got from teachers um in classes or in terms of the opportunities i got to do things like organize events at school um i got really into model un in high school like pretty much everyone at the time uh partly thanks to suraj but um at, at the time because of because this because the international section was so nascent and new um my school allowed me to organize um Cherekman a few years down the line there were a lot of these opportunities that really helped um helped me have a really good high school experience i'd say the big theme for me in high school was sort of um leadership opportunities they just popped up and whenever they popped up i just went ahead and grabbed them um if that sort of gives you a a broad answer i could go into more specific things but sure. Let, let's do that right so apart from model you when when you were applying to computer science what sort of struck your interest in it in the first place was there something that you did during high school was there something that you did outside of school that essentially formed the basis of your applications to stem degrees in general and computer science in particular um so this is um this again requires a little bit more context um so after high school i took a gap year um and worked for a year um the reason for me doing this was although i had applied to college in the um 12th grade i i i was sort of clueless when i first applied i applied for a bunch of majors um i applied for ece um uh, which is electrical and computer engineering i applied for uh, aerospace i applied for an economics degree and when i got admissions into like one university in each major i was like wait what am i doing right and i was like okay i need to take a step back breathe and then figure it out um i was interested in a bunch of these things because of internships i'd done in high school um or because of uh, projects i'd been working on on my own so um i knew i was distinctly interested in stem fields um and i had some interest in economics but i i didn't know which specific field so i took a year off um after high school and i spent that time working um so during that time i said you know what i'm going to go and try out um one job in each of these specific areas um and to me growing up computer science was sort of it was just the weird thing that my parents did to me it was just like you sit in front of a black computer and just like type stuff out right um and because because my parents were both computer scientists they sort of taught me how to code when i was a kid so i knew that but it didn't really interest me as a field um that i wanted to pursue as a career when i was actually working um my experiences showed me that i could apply what my parents were i could apply the sort of work that my parents were applying to say big banks to uh smaller organizations and have a social impact on the world okay. and that is sort of what drove me towards computer science specifically um but stem is something i think i've always been interested in um so cool okay so a couple of uh, one of the things that i wanted to talk to you also about was so you sort of figured out in once you took a gap year is when you figured out would you have any advice to is first of all there's this big misconception that a gap year is not really 
something that Indian students should be doing. I think that comes from a lot of cultural issues with parents, etc. Can you talk to us about how that particular year, the gap year itself was from your perspective? The gap year itself was actually, it's, it's interesting both um, on a personal level and on a professional level. Um, on a personal level, it's interesting because if you think about it, when you graduate from high school, the average age group of your friends is like 17 and a half years old, right? Um, and then when you take a gap year, if you're doing it right, you're hopefully either like working or um, trying out new experiences and not just staying at home. Um, like for me personally, the average age group of my friends shot up to 28, right? So while I was having conversations about, you know, getting my first driver's license, getting my first car, driving around for the first time, these people are talking about like, you know, uh, getting engaged, um, getting a house or like having a baby. So that on a personal level was a really interesting shift and gave me a really cool perspective into, into just how people at different age groups handle issues in life and also sort of helped me prepare for the future in that these people ended up forming a really good support system, gave me good advice as I was going into college, um, helped me figure out the path I wanted to take and just gave me really good career advice. And that's invaluable. Um, on the professional front, in school, it's unfortunate that high school as an experience globally is still very, uh, I, I would still call it very passive learning, right? You attend a class for math, right? You learn calculus, you do a few calculus problems, and that's it. You don't learn too much about why is that calculus important to something. Uh, for me, yeah. it was the case of computer science. Like, why would you need to optimize something? How does that optimization help? Um, how is that applied? That's not something that you learn. And so when I was thrown into like, I think my second job, um, it was, I was actually just like asked to read a paper um, that required me to use calculus I'd learned in school and then build some software around it. And that to me was like, whoa. Um, so it, it, it provides you, it provides you really cool learning opportunities that will, um, that will establish your, that'll establish your own, how do I put this? It'll establish how you understand things in the future. Um, so now all learning I do is active. I can no longer, even in college, just, just attend lectures. I have to be working on it. I have to talk to professor, um, work on some projects to really be able to get a true understanding of what that subject is. Um, and yeah, it, it, it was a great experience. Interesting. So I, I was talking to Sidebar, I was talking to Satvik a couple of, uh, was it a couple of weeks ago, I think. Yeah. And he went on to mention this fact about active versus passive learning, and I just want to touch upon that for a little bit. Every single school, every single most, I, I would say every single most high schools, specifically in India, don't really give you the intuition or the application behind all of the concepts that they're teaching. And one of the reasons why a lot of you are struggling to figure out what majors or what sort of career paths you're going to be interested in is because you've never seen the applications of what you study in real life. So that is one of the things that I know Sapik is working on. That's something also Grandpa and, uh, is absolutely interested in. So all of the profile building activities that we have for students in grade 9, 10, and first part of 11 are catered towards projects that you can do, conversations that you can have with people um, like Sapik and a bunch of others to figure out what they do on a day-to-day -day basis and then try and understand if that is something that you want to go uh, and pursue a career in. So that's how we give you the idea of what are potential careers that are possible and which one you are more likely to, likely to be a great fit at. All right, I wanted to get back, circle back to one of the other points that um, I wanted to touch upon. What was your profile like when you're applying? Did you have a bunch of internships? Did you majorly concentrate on the fact that you were really passionate about using computer science for social impact? What was your focus on when it came to essays when you're applying to college? Um, so for me, um, so like I mentioned earlier, I applied twice, right? So I applied in the 12th grade and I applied um, during my gap year. I think when I was applying in, um, in the 12th grade, my application was sort of all over the place. It didn't have one coherent story. At the time, sort of the profile that I was exhibiting was that, hey, I'm like, a high school student, I get really good grades, I'm a student leader, and I do like 10 different things, so you should take me. Um, it was that gap year and like, 
I wouldn't say it was necessarily just a gap year, but it's just the work experience, whether you get that when you're in high school or otherwise, gave me the clarity of, okay, here's what I'm good at, here's what I'm strong at, and I exhibited those strengths. So the strengths I was exhibiting was that I was somebody um, who had a good understanding of computer science concepts and was looking for opportunities to use those for social impact activities because I because I was exhibiting that I also understood uh, the concept of empathy. Right. Um, and the way I showed this was through, like, I was teaching um, computer science um, to high school girls during my gap year. Um, when I was in school, I was um, working on an information technology curriculum. So this isn't computer science, it's information technology, but an information technology curriculum for um, young girls. and. Um, it, it the, the statistics behind this at the time were really interesting in that uh, a young girl who finishes high school but doesn't have the means to go to college is like 75% more likely to get hired if she knows how to use a web browser in Excel. Um, and that's a simple fact. And a lot of us have sufficient computer literacy to be able to translate that um, into a skill you can teach people and make them a lot more employable. Um, right. So I was exhibiting that these were things that I was interested in and that, uh, yeah, I guess that, that that's what my profile was. It was uh, a computer science student who's really passionate about social change. Sounds good. So one of the things that I wanted to take away from that conversation again, and I'm harping on this one particular point for like the past three sections now. Universities are not looking for well-rounded individuals. Universities are looking for specialists who will make the class well-rounded. And that's one thing that I cannot stress enough. If there is one point that you take away from the entire webinar series, let that be the point. Don't indulge in 20 different things in your high school just because you have the opportunity to. Sure, in your ninth and 10th grades, figure out, take a bunch of these activities, figure out what which ones you like the most and then do a deep dive in them. Do not, for God's sake, just involve in 20 different things and just don't have any focus at any point in time. If I can just, if I can just add something there, I 200% agree with that. Um, it's To me, it's almost like a lie that somebody has been telling over and over again. And, and like people have gotten used to the idea that that is what it is. But in reality, it's not. Um, I... The way to think about this is if, if everyone was a well-rounded individual, what does that make the class? It makes the class an average class. There's nothing interesting going on in that class. Like, imagine the conversations between these people. They would be the exact same. Like, oh, did you do Model UN? Yeah, I did Model UN. Oh, did you play basketball? Yeah, I played basketball. Like, everybody would be doing the exact same things and nothing new is going to come out of it. Um, and that's not what universities are looking for. And I don't think that's what anybody's looking for. Like, if you're hiring for a job, that's not what a company is looking for. Um, if you're recruiting for a startup, that's not what they're looking for. Um, so, like, if you take away just one thing, not just from the webinar series, if you take only one piece of advice while applying to colleges, period, ever, that would be the one big thing. And I think that's the one big lie that students are told. Yeah, absolutely. And that was a great way of putting it, right? Like, if you recruit a bunch of well-rounded individuals, all of the conversations are going to be average conversations. There isn't going to be any sort of an innovative idea that's coming in. Yeah, great way to put that point. Um, so what are you working on now? I know you're a senior, you're a rising senior. So last year in college, what have you done so far? What are you working on right now? Um, so college has been interesting. Uh, a lot of the ideas that I thought I had about computer science, um, or about what I want to work on have been proven wrong to me in college. And I think that's been the greatest benefit for me. Um, it's that I came in with a plan and at every step, that plan has been dismantled by college, right? Um, and I think that's been really good for me in opened my eyes and showed me different directions I could take. Um, so right now, um, so I've become um, really interested in entrepreneurship over the past like 18 months or so. Um, last year, um, I founded a startup on my campus where we were trying to build a data collection platform um, and data collection standards more specifically for wildfires. Um, this is important because in the U.S. there's a lot of wildfires and a lot of money spent fighting these wildfires, but it's still quite ineffective. Um, it's not to disrespect the people who are on the front lines. They put in a lot of work, but it's because they're not assisted by technology. Um, right. their, their way of fighting wildfires isn't data-driven. 
Um, and we identified that problem and we're working on it. Um, we won the startup competition on campus, um, got some office space, etc. Uh, but that didn't pan out. Um, and now I'm really excited to go back into the entrepreneurship game. Um, in the past year or so, um, I've become more interested in human-computer interaction. Um, it's something I've been interested in for a while, but I've spent the last like good six to eight months reading research papers, um, experimenting, talking to founders around the world, um, trying to see, just trying to identify some problem areas. Um, the one big thing I'm working on right now is uh, I think audio is going to be the first AR platform um, that's going to be mass adopted. Um, if you notice the behavior of people who have like AirPods or other wireless earbuds, they're always in their ears, um, even when they're not listening to things. That's because people have found these devices just easy to keep in um, and removing them introduces a new step when they have to consume media. Um, so I'm trying to build an augmented reality platform where that becomes your primary computing interface. So, yeah. Um, guys, you can always ask us questions in the chat section, but I have one last question from myself and then I'll open it up to questions from the audience. Um, what advice would you give someone who's in their ninth and 10th grades? And what advice would you give to someone who's in 11th and getting ready to apply? Um, in the ninth and 10th grade, I think, I think the biggest piece of advice is be yourself. Um, and by that, I mean, don't, don't do things because your friends are doing them. Um, right. That'll just eat up all your time. You're going to do one thing because your friends are doing it. Um, then the next thing you know, you you all have essentially the same schedule. Because if you go together to, like, say, participate in one activity, you're going to want to go and participate in another activity together. Um, spend that time really figuring out what is your interest. If that's weird, let it be weird. The weird kids are the cool kids, right? Um, yeah. If you think that's nerdy, that's fine. Like, the nerdy kids become the cool kids in college. Like, figure out what it is that you enjoy. And do that in the most stress-free environment. If you think going to like a robotics camp where you have to get a certificate is going to be stressful for you and it's going to force you to like fake an interest in it, don't do it. Get a book, read it. Um, buy some stuff, just sit in your room and build it. If you have to do it alone, do that. Um, if you need somebody to help you, then you should do that as well. But essentially do it in a way where there's no pressure. There's no pressure for you to perform because in the ninth and 10th grade, there really isn't any pressure for you to perform. You don't have to build the right. next big robot. Um, you don't have to uh, write the next big game or the next big iOS app. Like that's that's not what the time's for. Just really just figure out what it is what it is that you like, where you are within that, and how you can learn more without any pressure. Um, and just have fun, really. Like the big the big takeaway there is like be yourself and have fun. Um, if you're in the eleventh and twelfth grade, um, I think it's figure out a plan, right? Um, it's it's still not like too late to figure out what you want to do and where things are going to go but plan things out just because it's going to make the next year or year and a half of like your high school so much more um, stress-free and you're going to have so much more fun once you have those pieces together um, i know the college application process can introduce a lot of anxiety and a lot of stress and really the only way to beat that is to like have a well-established plan um, right. have somebody to check in with um, whether that's like the team at Gradvine or like a parent or like even just a peer who you check in with from time to time just have somebody to check in with like hey here's right. what I've done so far um, that really helps stay calm um, helps you not feel stressed out helps you not get anxious and will help you have so much fun like 11th and 12th grade are going to be some of the most fun years of school um, but you can only have that fun if you manage to stay away from the stress. So, absolutely, and plan well. Yeah, great points. Thank you so much, guys. Um, everyone on the call, are there any questions that you wanted to ask Sathvik? I'm gonna give it one, maybe two minutes. Okay, so let's see. There are a bunch of questions for us specifically in terms of Gradvine, and I'm gonna go ahead and answer those. But I wanted to try and see if you guys had any questions for um, Sathvik specifically. Any questions for him in terms of what his journey was or anything of that sort? All of the questions here that I'm seeing are graphite specific and then I will go ahead and answer that. While we have Safik here, are there any other questions that you guys wanted him to answer? 
Sure. What did you do that accounted for STEM in school, in high school? Sure. Um, so uh, there were a few things. Um, I was in the IB curriculum, and so as a part of that, for um, my classes, I had to do a bunch of like internal assessments, they're called, which is just like you have to produce. Um, it, it's a research paper, I would say. Like it's 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 a decently structured research paper. Um, at least for the time, it's for that age, it's it's quite it's quite rigorous in terms of the level of research. Um, and to me, that was a really exciting experience that got me interested in uh, a lot of areas of STEM that I wasn't familiar with earlier. Um, this allowed me to like build cool things because I was learning. Um, a lot about kinds of math, like a lot of things about math that I didn't know earlier. And so I had to build simulations for these and um, to be able to show them off in class. I had to build simulations for like torque converters for physics. Um, and that was like, that was super exciting for me, super interesting. I had a lot of fun doing that. Um, other than that, I built a lot of websites um, in school, just for like school events for other people for like, because I was in Model UN, Whenever somebody was organizing a model UN conference, I was like, let me build your website for you. Yeah. And I would just keep building websites. Um, it was it was a way of like being involved in these events um, and sort of exhibiting that skill. Cool. Okay. One other question. I think you've um, talked about this a little earlier, but in brief, when did you decide computer science was for you? Um, so I decided that computer science was like the one. Um, when, like I said, during my gap year, um, I was working at um, the LB Prasad I Institute in Banjara Hills, um, and we were developing um, a medical device that helped um, diagnose diabetic retinopathy, which is like um, an issue that's created in the eye when somebody has diabetes. Yeah. And, like the diagnostic equipment for this costs, I believe, like fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. And you would have people come in from faraway villages, like 200, 250 kilometers away in a bus. They would know nobody in Hyderabad, so they would know they wouldn't have any place to stay. So they like sleep at the bus stop or on the street, waiting for their appointment to come and get tested. And the test takes like yeah. four to five minutes. And so the device we built cost three hundred dollars, fit in a backpack, was the size of an Oculus Rift, and could be taken by like a bunch of nurses to the villages and actually checked on people. And when we saw the impact that was like having on people and how it reduced the cost of healthcare, I was amazed. I was like, okay, computer science isn't just working for a bank and making money. It isn't just like, you know, building the next chatting app. It can really transform lives. And that, that was like what changed it for me. Absolutely. And I'm assuming that that was a big part of some of the essays that you've uh, written for our university, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so one other question from Mira. She asks you when you started researching about universities. Um, so I sort of started figuring out what universities I wanted to go to early on. Um, this was, I would say, like eighth grade-ish, uh, but that was probably too early because I didn't know what I wanted to major in. So it didn't make sense to, like, set a goal of here's where I want to go. Um, I started around then, but I kept revising that. Um, and during my gap year, as I was working and figuring out um, what I wanted to major in, that's when I came up with my final list based on which universities had the resources to allow me to do research in um, those fields. So, Cool. All right. That's pretty much it, I think, in terms of the questions that we had for Satvik. Again, thank you so much for joining in, man. This has been a pleasure. Um, there are a couple of questions for Gradvine that I can go ahead and answer. Sure. Feel free to drop off or stay on for the rest of it. But thank you so much. Um, I'm sure that these guys got a lot out of the journey itself. And I will probably bring you on for subsequent sessions as well when we can have a panel of some of the really cool mentors that are doing diverse sorts of things and have a bunch of kids just throw random questions at you guys. Yeah. Sure. Thank you so much yeah. for having me. I really oh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. I'll catch up with you um, in a lot of weeks. Yeah. Sure. Yep. See you. Okay. Bye. So a couple of you guys ask us specific Gradvine questions. One is, can you help students with building their profile for Ivy League schools? Absolutely. We've had 
a record that is unparalleled when it comes to uh, education consulting companies within India or the world. 52%, one in every two students that we counsel goes on to an IBE or a top 10 for their choice. Um, so Arsh, yes, we help you out with the profile building. We do not do standardized test prep, so we do not do prep for ACTs or the SATs or any of that sort. So that's not something that we help with. We absolutely help you out with the essays, and I've told you exactly how we do that. Um, Akash asks us, do you help with financial services and shortlisting universities? Absolutely. We have in-house mentors as well as mentors on the ground in the universities that you're targeting or that are the best possible fit for you. So we will do the university shortlisting first, then pair you up with a mentor who will sit down with you, work with you on the essays. Then we'll have an internal committee that will go through all of the essays that you've written, make sure that they are tailored to that specific university and the major that you're applying to, and make sure that these are essays that are top notch and the best essays that get you into your uh, dream universities. Venkatesh asks me if I'm preparing for the August SAT, should I take the profile building services if I'm in my early 11th grade? This is the right time, my friend. If you delay it further, you are going to lose out on three specific things. One, figuring out your major. Two, figuring out your specific universities to apply to. And three, getting a leg up in terms of what kind of themes you want to be thinking about, what kind of essays you want to be writing. And these are, I cannot stress enough on how important these three factors are for you to be getting into a really good university. So this is a little on the later side for you to be starting profile building. But if you lose out on this time, there is no better time for you to get started on that. So this is the time to apply. Lavish asks us, can you evaluate profile before I start applying? Absolutely. For anyone that wants a profile evaluation done, schedule your free consultation call on www.gradvine.com. I or my team will get on a conversation with you, look through your entire profile, give you direction in terms of what you need to do next. As a 10th standard student, how do I figure out what my career paths are? Okay, so let me put up one slide in terms of how we help you guys. Profile building is for people that are in their 8th, 9th, 10th, and first half of 11th. Application assistance is for people who are ready to apply or have figured out that uh, they want to absolutely apply. This is usually in their early 11th grades, right? For profile building, essentially, we set up conversations one-on-one -on -one with six to eight mentors. Mentors are people like Satvik who are at brilliant top 10 universities. So we have mentors from MIT, Stanford, Harvard, Carnegie Mellon, UIC, Berkeley, Anything, any university that you can think of, we have at least five or six mentors in that particular university. So we will cater about six to eight conversations for you guys with these uh, mentors. You talk to them, figure out what they do on a day-to-day -day basis, what their profiles were like, etc. And then you internally sit down with one of our counselors and figure out what uh, sort of major, minor combination you want to apply to. We also build, uh, we also give you hands-on experience to figure out what your passions are. This could include taking up projects under someone like Satwek. So building a website under the assistance and the guidance of someone like Satwek, doing an economics project under the guidance of someone like Divyansh, uh, doing a business case study under the guidance of someone like uh, Shivani, who I'm going to bring next. If you're a math geek, then doing uh, pre-calc or calc with someone like Akhil, who is a UCLA math undergrad, who I'm going to bring. And then personalized timelines. Basically, essentially figuring out um, what timelines you guys need to stick towards. What are specific timelines for you that is, that is going to help you get into really good universities. So those are all of the things that uh, profile building will be. All of the projects are customized, Akash. Every single project is customized to students that are applying to specific sort of programs and universities. So those are the ways. Neha asks us, as a class 10 student, how can I figure out my career paths? Take the profile building, talk to as many people as possible, do projects. That gives you so much knowledge and information about what's out there in the field and how you can customize your own profile to get there, right? So that would be one of the ways that you can sort of figure out what to do in terms of career paths as a 10th grader or early 11th grader. All of the projects are customized, Akash, again. So... Thank you so much for joining in.